Hey guys, OGL Biden here, bringing you guys my APA Little Cup Week 2 battle against Zombie and his Victoria Victinis. Um, so yeah, if you guys do enjoy the video, be sure to drop a like, subscribe, just so you guys can catch our drafting battles as they go up every week. We got three leagues we're uploading right now. And um, yeah, with that being said, let's jump right into the team builder. I do want to go a little bit quick with the team builders, especially for Little Cup, being that the EV spreads aren't as intricate. Um, you know, the prep doesn't take as long and the battles aren't as long, so I don't want, you know, 75% of the things being in team builder, so we are going to speed that up, hopefully. Um, and yeah, so looking team matchup, our team is consists of the Torchic, Elekid, Drillbur, Frillish, Rowlet, Baneri, Jangmo'o, Smoochum, Beldum, and Grubbin, while Zombies rocking out with the Timber, Snubble, Tentacool, Woobat, Rogmarola, Charmander, Alolan Rattata, Shelmet, Sunkern, and Nemo. Um, so yeah, biggest threats right off the bat, uh, Charmander can be a bit scary, as well as Timber. Um, Timber, more so scary if we do lose our check to it, which is on the screen right now, actually. Um, and Charmander is more so scary because our best check to it is our Timber check. So um, it's very, very pressured, and if we do let it get too weakened, Charmander can be very scary because we lack um, you know, good fire resist other than our Frillish right here because Torchic doesn't really count. It takes um, you know a ton of damage from that thing. Um, but other than those two, biggest threat by far is the Alolan Rattata. That thing can pretty much just one-shot my entire team, especially if hazards go up. Um, my best way of dealing with it is most likely luring it, uh, just outspeeding it, something like that. There's no way I can really defensively check it. It two-taps my entire team no matter what I do. Um, Oko is a good majority of it as well. Um, but yeah, with that being said, let's just jump right into the actual team builder. So, first member we have up is going to be Frillish right here, rocking out with the Cold Berry and the Water Absorbability, Scald, Dazzling Gleam, Recover, Will-O-Wisp, and um, Scald, Dazzling Gleam, Recover, Will-O-Wisp, sorry. 236 HP, 116 Defense, and 126 Special Attack with a Bold Nature. Um, so, this is going to be our Timber check. It can take it on pretty reliably well as long as it's not too boosted up. Knockoff isn't doing very much with or without our Culberberry because if we don't have an item to knock off, it doesn't do as much. Um, so we can take that thing on pretty well, recover up on it, hit it with a Dazzling Gleam, burn it with will o -Wisp, something like that, um, and take it on pretty decently well. Uh, it also serves as a bit of a Rattata lore with this investment as long as we stay above around 70-ish percent, I believe. We can take a Life Orb Crunch. And with this special attack investment that we have, we always kill that thing after rocks or after a life orb chip or anything like that, um, which can be very, very beneficial because, like I said, that thing just does kind of run through our team. So yeah, that is going to be Frillish right there, very important member this week. Definitely need to keep that guy healthy. Next up, we have our Torchic right here, um, rocking out with the berry, berry Juice Speed Boost, Substitute Fire Blast, Hidden Power Ground, and Protect, 200 Special Attack, 40 Spadef, and 236 speed with a modest nature. Um, so we're running sub and protect. Uh, protect sub is mostly for mind games with the alone rotata. If we already have a speed boost up and that thing comes up, it obviously just absolutely obliterates us with a sucker punch. But if we can win those mind games and get behind a sub, we can definitely knock that thing out with a fire blast as it's not very bulky. Protect is if the alone rotata isn't a you know in versus us or a big threat and we don't want to lose any health with substitute then we can just you know throw up a protect and get our speed boost that way berry juice actually lets us you know get up more subs it lets us you know sub down things to get our health back up if we need to being that we will pretty much outspeed everything after a plus one boost um minus scarfers and things like that fire plus and hp ground hits a good majority of his team everything that fire boss doesn't hit hp ground does so with some chips this can be another great great late game cleaner um, and yeah, so that's going to be Torchic. Next up, we have our Drillver. Drillver has a great matchup this week. It's rocking out with a Rocky MZ, Mold Breaker ability, Swords Dance, Earthquake, Rock Slide, and Rapid Spin. 36 HP, 236 attack, and 212 speed. Had to go max speed to, you know, speed tie with things like the Lone Rotata and the Tentacool if they decide to run max speed. Um, Earthquake spam is amazing for his team. He doesn't have a resist outside of Shelmet, and we're carrying the Rock Z and Rock Slide for that thing at plus two. We always knock that thing out with a um, Rock MZ, even if he's, you know, max fist F. And if he's not max fist F, then just regular plus two Rock Slide can potentially knock him out, and we can save that Rock Z for something else. But mostly that's what it's going to be for. Um, Earthquake, like I said, hits a good majority of the rest of his team. He does not switch into plus two Drillbur at all. It pretty much just claims one versus his team. Um, 
and it also does give us hazard control and a pretty fast member with rapid spin for a couple members later on the team that do definitely appreciate um, hazard control. Like, I mean, I guess Torchic does as well, but there's another member in particular that I definitely want to keep hazards off the field for. So yeah, next up is going to be Elicate. Elicate, just like last week, is a great breaker this week. Um, brought out with Life Orb, Static Ability, Thunderbolt, Bolt Switch, Hidden Power Water, and Fire Punch. 96 attack, 240 special attack, 156 speed with a mild nature. So, uh, Elicate, like I said, great wall breaker. Uh, just stab, it's pretty much everything on his team. Um, the only things that, you know, don't really get to a KO by Bolt Switch and Thunderbolt are going to be the Numal because it's immune, but if he is not, um, we can pretty much always knock that thing out with the Hidden Power Water being that it is a four times weakness um, with the Life Orb and the plus special attack nature, and then Fire Punch hits the Shelmet. If he is Spadef Shelmet, he can potentially take two of our Thunderbolts, and if he's Spadef, then our Fire Punch can two KO him um, that way, which is very, very nice. Um, so yeah, I look at very nice. Also, speed control versus team. He doesn't have anything that can outspeed other than the Scarfers. Only thing we really have to worry about is Scarfers and Sucker Punch from Rattata. Um, yeah, so next up we have Rallet. We're actually bringing SD Rallet this week, which is really cool. Um, it hits a good, good majority of his team. Everything that Brave Bird doesn't hit, we really does. Um, so we kind of just, if we get up to plus two, we kind of just claim one with this Rallet, um, just because of Brave Bird's high, high, you know, base power. Heavy Olight with the long reach ability. Um, Swords Dance Roost, Brave Bird, Leaf Blade, 132 HP, 76 attack, 76 defense, 36 spadef, and 180 speed with a jolly nature. Um, this also su serves as a pseudo um, timber check. You know, if he's not carrying coverage for it, this thing can take it on pretty well. We pretty much always outspeed it unless he's running a max speed jolly timber, which I don't expect. I feel like he needs the bulk if he wants to run it or he wants the adamant power. So while it will outspeed it, and we always knock it out with a plus two brave bird, and if he's weak and we knock him out with just a regular brave bird, which is very, very nice. Um, so yeah, it's going to be Rallet. Uh, nice sleeper pick. I don't think he'll expect it, just because when you think Rallet, you don't really think of SD. I guess it's it's more usually used as a bulky utility role. But yeah. Um, so last up, we have Smoochum. Smoochum's holding a Focus Sash with the Forewarn ability, Ice Beam, Psychic, Reflect, Light Screen, 36 HP, 236 Special Attack, and 236 Speed with a Timid Nature. Um, I didn't really need any coverage other than Ice Beam and Psych, so I just kind of threw on Reflect and Light Screen just to potentially get a last ditch like Suicide Screen off or things like Rowlet or Drillbur to be able to set up better or Torchic to be able to get behind a sub on, you know, an advantageous matchup or something like that. Um, you never know when it could come in handy. I'm holding the Focus Sash because actually if we can keep Rocks off the field or Spike off the field with Drillbur, um, this can also kind of lure the Rattata. After one, after any chip damage, life orb, anything like that, um, to Rattata, we always knock it out with Ice Beam. We have a 50% chance to knock out no bulk Rattata with just, you know, Ice Beam from full, which is very, very nice. Uh, I think this is one of his ways he's going to think, oh, I can come in and revenge this thing pretty easy. So if we can keep that Sash intact and potentially lure and knock that thing out, I think it could be amazing. Um, I, I thought about, you know, maybe running... Um, you know, like Culver or something like that, but we still drop to it just because base 15 defense is definitely not going to help us out in that. Um, but yeah, that's going to be Spoochum, and that's the whole team. Uh, let's jump right into the battle. Alright guys, here we are with the battle. So looking at the team that Zombie Electro Brain looks like he went with the Tentacle, Nummel, Snubble, Shelmet, Rattata, and Charmander. So right off the bat, I noticed no Timber, which does take a lot of pressure off my Frillish and keeping it healthy for that thing as it could be very, very scary versus my build, um, which is very, very nice because he's bringing me a little Rattata, which again is the biggest start to my team, so we definitely have to play around that and the Charmander very well. Um, notice that he did bring a lot of potential hazards, so keeping uh, Drillbur healthy in order to, you know, potentially rapid spin those away for things like Elicate and Torchic, I appreciate taking them, and uh, smooch him to keep it Sash and Tech very very nice and uh something to keep in mind so right after that i am going to lead with my smoochum just because i can two tap pretty much everything on his team not named shelman um while shelman is a pretty likely lead i have some nice pivots into that thing and i want to get in potentially before my uh before hazards go up so i can you know get a big hit off on something you know to a ko something before i do lose my sash um so yeah with that being said let's just start the battle really quick so yeah i am going to lead off with my smoochum as he likes to lead off with the shaman, which does suck, but like I said, I do have pivots in those. Um, I'm going to go into my Torchic right here, expecting him to get a hazard up right here. 
as he does go for the spike. So right here, I'm going to just throw off the sub, uh, see what he wants to go for. I don't expect him to stay in. Leash Life isn't doing much to me at all. Um, as we do throw off the sub, as he goes into Snubble, um, and we get our speed boost. So right here, I am just going to throw off a Fire Blast, trying to gauge damage, as we see that he is either Spadef or Eviolite by this damage, as he goes for the EQ, and he definitely breaks our sub. So right here, it doesn't look like I can, I'm going to be able to do a KO on. So I am going to swap out into my Rowlet, expecting another EQ, because he can't really play around this thing very well, especially earlier in the game. I don't think he wants to risk me staying in and um, him over-predicting. So right here, I'm going to go for a Swords Dance, as this king can't really do a KO me. Um, as he goes for the Toxic, which is unfortunate, because that does lower the longevity of it with this plus Brave Bird. But right here, we can just throw off a plus two Brave Bird and pretty much knock something out, as he goes into Shelmet, and we do nab a KO on that thing. So first KO of the game, which is very nice. Um, it means if we can wrap us in that spike away, no more spikes for the rest of the game, as he elects to go into his Charmander, and I'm going to pivot into my Frillish, um, take 31%, I believe, yeah, from the Flare Blitz, and then get burned, unfortunately, which does, um, does, you know, hurt our longevity and stuff like that, being that we don't have any residual, as he does go for the Thunder Punch. I don't know if that necessarily mattered a bunch, um, with the burn chip in it, so I'm not gonna call hacks, but, um, yeah, super unfortunate that it does end up going down. So right here, I'm going to go into Drillbur, um, and expecting him to want to swap out of this thing, I am going to just go for the Rapid Spin to get that spike away for my Torchic and my Sass Mujum in the back. And so right here, I am going to switch out into my Rowlet, um, as I can take a Play Rough into Poison from this thing um, and get off a big Brave Bird. Um, and take myself out due to recoil, but still get a big chunk off on this thing and chip it pretty well. So down goes Rowlet, which is unfortunate, but did its job. Smoochum's going to come in right here um, and pretty much to pick up a 2 hit KO on anything as he elects to leave in the snubble and let that guy go down, which is very, very nice because no more Intimidate shuffling for things like my SD Drillber. As right here, he is going to go for the Breakneck Blitz on his alone right as he goes in, but we are focused now, so we're going to stay in and hopefully get the roll, which we do not, so he does live on just a sliver, which is unfortunate, um, and down goes our, um, down goes our Smoochum, which is unfortunate, uh, but I'll take it, it's, it's all good, it weakened enough to where I can just go and Elekin and click in Power Water as he elects not to click the Sucker Punch, which was a bit odd, but hey, I'll take it, um, and right here, we're going to go for a Hidden Power Water on the Numal, as we can usually knock it out, but he is Peshoberry, which is a very cool bring, so we are, he is able to avoid that um, KO and bop us back with the Earth Power. So right here, I'm going to go right into Torchic, I'm just going to throw off a Hidden Power Ground, hits everything left on the team, knock out the Numal, which is nice because that thing obviously was a very, very big threat. Um, and yeah, that thing's going to go down. As he ends up going into his Charmander, right here, I'm going to sub down just to see what he wants to do. Um, you know, potentially play around it as he goes for the Dragon Claw. And right here, I'm going to sub down again just to get completely back up to full health due to the Berry Juice. Um, and, you know, potentially take those hits better, depending on his spread and what coverage he has for us. So right here, he is going to go for a Dragon Claw again, obviously break our sub. And right here, I am going to throw off a Hidden Power Ground. As you're going to see, it does a bunch of damage, 66% but he does turn out to be uh, Berry Juice, which is unfortunate. Uh, but he's going to go for a Dragonfly right here, and you're going to see that he doesn't actually do a Chaos with that, unless he got a super, super low roll. So I am going to be able to throw off another Hidden Power as he goes for a Dragonfly, and he actually doesn't uh, Chaos from that range, which is cool, because now we're going to be able to pick off this Charmander um, and leave it towards just Tentacruel versus... Uh, our Drillbur and our Torchic. And if he's Shooka, I can pop it right here with the HP ground and potentially either go and win a speed tie with uh, Drillbur or um, knock it out, you know, you know, just be faster in general. So turns out that he wasn't. We get a crit and bring it down pretty low as he knocks us out with Scald, so gun knows Torchic. And right here, like I said, all we need to do is win a potential speed tie um, and knock this thing out as he does outspeed us and knock us out. Found out after the game, actually, though, he was actually Choice Scarf Tentacle, so it wasn't even a speed tie, um, which is a really, really cool bring on Zombie's part. Uh, Scarf Tentacle never, never crossed my mind. It was a really, really cool bring speed control-wise, just for my stuff that could potentially get out of hand. Um, like if I thought I was safe with a plus one Torchic or something like that. So yeah, GG's a Zombie, that was an amazing, amazing game. I had a lot, a lot of fun playing it. Um, definitely a nail-biter right down to the end. Um, but yeah, uh, if you guys did enjoy... Uh, the battle and you want to catch more as they go up you know next week when uh our next little cup battle goes up or our cap run which goes up on wednesdays uh that battle should be going up uh, in a couple days and our ncp wi-fi run which goes up on fridays be sure to subscribe 
Um, and yeah, thank you guys so, so much for watching. Later.